What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So more footage from the archives resurface as the anticipation and build up to the most highly anticipated showdown in the sport of boxing today currently between undefeated three division world champion, former junior welterweight undisputed world champion, currently the reigning WBO World Boxing Organization welterweight world champion who is widely considered by many to be the number one best pound for pound fighter in the world and Terrence Bud Crawford, 38 wins, no losses, no draw, 29 big wins by way of knockout. He is uh, 34 years of age, five foot eight with a 74 inch arm reach, an undefeated unified three belt WBC, WBA, IBF welterweight world champion, superstar boxer, who is widely considered by many to be top two, if not number one, but definitely top five pound for pound best fighters in the world, and Earl the True Spence Jr who is 28 wins, no loss and no draw, 30, uh, 22 big wins by way of knockout. He's 32 years of age, five foot nine and a half with a 72 inch arm reach. So as we get closer and closer to uh, the biggest fight in the sport of boxing for all the marbles, for undisputed at the welterweight division, obviously footage, interviews and videos is gonna resurface from the past, right? distant past, not too distant past, recent, you know, so on and so forth, right? And um, a video surfaced that was sent to me and uh, asked what my thoughts was currently today's time after seeing <clears throat> Errol Spence back at the top of his game after suffering a horrific car accident, okay? Uh, and after suffering a broken or detached retina uh, that saw him, the car accident saw him out the ring for a while, okay, 14 months, uh, and the eye injury saw him out the ring for a year, okay? And uh, he came back with a vengeance, right? And uh, absolutely dominated former WBA welterweight world champion, Cuban star boxer, Yadena Sugis, breaking his nose, ribs, and orbital bone. And uh, Terrence Crawford, he dominated, uh, um, majority of his career and had a big massive win in his last fight against two-time welterweight world champion superstar boxer retired future hall of famer showtime sean porter which he did something that's never been done he dropped sean porter twice and then stopped him in the 10th round of their fight and so they are on their they're, both of their trajectories are very high but what i make of these comments that errol spence stated you know um Everybody asks me what I think of him and do I think it's possible for Errol Spence to do what he said he's going to do, okay? Which is wash uh, uh, Terrence Crawford and possibly stop him, okay? So listen to what he said. He said the Russian dude, if the Russian dude could knock him down, he's going to say, I definitely have a very high chance of stopping him. The Russian dude he's talking about is Igis Kavalaskis, uh, in which he unofficially dropped Terrence Crawford in their fight. Uh, and you had Olympic gold medalist, Hall of Fame, iconic superstar boxer, turned boxing pundit and reporter and uh, analyst, Andre S.O.G. Ward, who was calling the fight and was absolutely not happy with what he was seeing because Terrence Crawford just decided that he wanted to stay in the pocket and mix it up with Igas Kavalaskis. And Igas Kavalaskis was being first. He was getting the better of Terrence Crawford uh, and he hurt Terrence Crawford a few times and then he unofficially dropped Terrence Crawford in the fight. And so that's the fight that Errol Spence is pointing to when he said the Russian guy could hurt him, uh, so can I. And then he's gonna go on to say this. And so then he said he, he was hurt by Olympic gold medalist, three division world champion, superstar boxer out of Cuba, Yuriokis Gamboa. Yuriokis Gamboa definitely hurt Terrence Crawford a few times. 
And Terrence Crawford admitted that. Terrence Crawford, he stated that that was his toughest fight of his career, which was Yoriokas Gamboa because of his stature, his uh, awkwardness, his speed, and his athletic ability, and the fact that he had power in both hands. So. And what and, and he's saying how focused he is because um he's admitting uh that he um in between fights was enjoying the fruits of his labor and wasn't committed to the sport of boxing and was having weight loss camps opposed to having strategic strategy camps uh and focusing on the game plan and his opponent. So you said you he, he already said he said even in the Sean Porter fight. I was blown up, you know, um, I was out of shape, okay? Uh, that's what he stated. So if you want to hear it again, listen. I definitely stop, especially how focused I am right now. Cause you know, usually, even the Sean Porter fight, I was blown up to, but you know, but at the same time, in the day, I feel like I washed Terrence Crawford. You think you washed? Said he gonna wash Terrence Crawford. And uh, many people was asking me, Blue, what you think? Uh, is Earl Spence, capable of washing Terrence Crawford. I mean, based off of the last few fights we saw at Errol Spence, he definitely has the ability. Uh, again, your Dana Sugis was bigger than Errol Spence, and uh, he broke his ribs, nose, and orbital bone. And um, your Dana Sugis is a very skilled Cuban boxer, but the thing about your Dana Sugis is he don't have the power of Terrence Crawford. He don't have the, uh, um, the tools that Terrence Crawford has. He don't have the uh, um, the ability to make the adjustments that Terrence Crawford can make. And he definitely don't have the power, right? You know, uh, and then Errol Spence, you know, uh, he stopped former IBF welterweight world champion, British superstar boxer, Special K, Cal Brook, uh, in the UK for his first title opportunity, and he broke his orbital bone as well. Um, so he also stopped Lamont Peterson, right? Uh, former world champion. So does he have the abilities and the physical makeup to stop a Terrence Crawford? Absolutely. Because Terrence Crawford is naturally the smaller guy, okay? He started his career at 130, 135, world champion, 140 world champion, and a world champion at 47, obviously. So um, he definitely has the ability, you know, um, to, uh, 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 to stop Terrence Crawford. Will he is a whole completely different story. Um, Terrence Crawford has the ability to uh, um, be very versatile. Uh, he's very skilled, like Errol Spence attested to. He respects his, he respects Terrence Crawford's skills. You know, uh, he respects his abilities. Um, but he just feels like Igas Kavalaskis. You know, uh, if Igas Kavalaskis can have success against Terrence Crawford, so could he. You know, um, and what I would say to that is this, right? is that um, styles make fights. That's number one. And number two, um, it's all about Terrence Crawford's approach. Is he going to approach the Errol Spence fight in the same manner he approached the Igus, Igus Kavalaskis fight? Because I just simply think that Terrence Crawford didn't have uh, um, much respect for Igus Kavalaskis' skill set. Uh, he may have even overlooked him a bit, although Terrence Crawford leading up into the fight stated that uh, he identified just how good uh, Igis Kavalaskis was. So Terrence Crawford admitted that Igis Kavalaskis was a very, very good fighter and that the people that were saying it was a cherry pick uh, was underestimating Igis Kavalaskis and his skill set and his abilities, okay? Um, but did Terrence Crawford possibly overlook him? Uh, possibly, strong possibility. Maybe Terrence Crawford, he viewed the fight and he said, this dude can't keep up with me, right? And he may have shocked Terrence Crawford and been better than what he actually thought he was. Uh, and another thing about it is Errol Spence is a southpaw, right? Uh, Terrence Crawford predominantly uh, fights in the southpaw manner these days. And uh, that's where he has his most success. Um, once upon a time, Terrence Crawford would fight in the orthodox stance, and when he fought in the orthodox stance, Terrence Crawford would be very versatile, uh, be very elusive, and uh, very slick 
and he's one of the best counter punchers, right? He no longer displays that to me. He don't win fights in the orthodox stands anymore. And when he is in the orthodox stands, uh, he gets hit and touched a lot more than I'm accustomed to seeing him. I'm accustomed to seeing him get hit, right? Um, and so with that said, you know, um, this is definitely the rubber gonna meet the road because on the flip side of that, we seen Errol Spence hurt by Emmanuel not a, a latte, right? And um, Terrence Crawford has power in both hands. He's ambidextrous, right? Uh, he switches from southpaw to orthodox. Extremely long arms, and I think that his physical strength is uh, underrated because of his because of his uh, how do you say it? How, his physical appearance. Uh, he has a very slim, wiry frame. And so I think that that gets overlooked, right? And um, because of that, you know, uh, I think that people underestimate his just natural physical strength. And Terrence Crawford has a huge chip on his shoulder. He has a huge dog in him. But Terrence Crawford has showed us in a Victor Pole style fight and other fights that, for one, he's a very good counter puncher. But for two, he could be a pure boxer for a duration of a fight if need be. The question I have is, is he going to be uh, uh, in the mindset of just being a better pure boxer than Errol Spence? Outbox, outboxing him, uh, counter punching him and utilizing the ring? Or is Terrence Crawford going to want to show and present that dog that he has inside of him and uh, want to stop to er Errol Spence. Now that's playing in the Errol Spence's wheelhouse. So it's abundantly clear the game plan for Errol Spence. He also said that he can definitely outwork Terrence Crawford. He's gonna uh, uh, throw more punches. He has a very, very high work rate, Errol Spence does, okay? Uh, Terrence Crawford is uh, historically a slow starter. So he can't be a slow starter, right? Because something is gonna give. When, you, when you're fighting a guy like Errol Spence, the uh, talent level is not going is not going to fade. What I mean by that is that Terence Crawford is definitely a better talent, okay, than uh, Igas Kavalaskis, Jose Benavidez Jr., Sean Porter, uh, Uriokis Gamboa, you know, um, and the list goes on and on, right? In this case with Errol Spence, this is a 50-50 fight. And so because it's a 50-50 fight with Errol Spence, right, um, and Errol Spence is considered to have equal talent. Now they they do they do it and deliver it in different ways, right? Uh, Igas Kavalaskis, you know, um, showed that he could out time. You could out time and counter Terence Crawford, but then Terence Crawford showed that he can make the adjustments and counter what you're countering, right? And he's shown us different uh, facets of winning fights. The Victor Bowl style fight, the Sean Porter fight, Eagles Kavalaskis fight. <clears throat> Errol Spence has shown his versatility as well. Mikey Garcia fight different from the Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia fight different from the Kell Brook fight. Kell Brook fight different from the uh, um, um, the uh, the uh, Yordana Sugis fight, right? So, you know, uh, the most similar fight is the Ugas and Kell Brook fight. A lot of similarities. Kel Booker's bigger than Errol Spence, or just as big, strong with good timing, fundamentally sound. So those things, you know, play a major part. So is his talent level. See, once the cream is always gonna rise to the top, and Terrence Crawford's cream is his talent, when he's facing those guys, is always gonna rise above them at some point in time because of his mindset and his natural abilities. That's not gonna be the case with Errol Spence, it's gonna be a war in nutrition. So Andre Ward said something very interesting. He said, after six rounds, it's going to turn into who has been more dedicated up until this time. That's what it's gonna show in the, in the, from the six round on. And I agree, but I absolutely cannot wait to see it. And this is the mindset Errol Spence has, which lets me know he's gonna to look to be a machine. He's gonna to look to be very, very active, put a lot of pressure on, on Terrence Crawford and look to break him down and stop him because he truly believes that in his heart. And Terrence Crawford is one of the best counter punchers with a lot of power, extremely long arms and versatile. So the rubber's gonna meet the road. Let's see how it unfolds and plays out.
And that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. You haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon and get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to Black Media Raw. Make sure you like your shitty videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.